Milwaukee braces versus modern scoliosis braces. Which are the best? When I consult with patients regarding scoliosis, very often the, the conversation comes up regarding bracing and which type of bracing is the best. You know, we have many different types of braces out there. And the first thing we have to understand when it comes to scoliosis is that scoliosis is not really a curable condition. Like there's no treatment out there that actually cures scoliosis, but it's highly treatable. And treatment is typically driven by the the treatment approach, meaning there's different treatment approaches that are used to help manage scoliosis, and each one has different end goals and potential outcomes when we look at the management and treatment of scoliosis. When we look at treatment approaches, there are really two main types. There are traditional treatment options, and that these these have changed very, very little over the years, and the goal really is funneling patients towards spinal fusion, meaning very little is done to reduce the scoliosis. They're just trying to slow down progression, and as curves become severe enough, they're recommending spinal fusion. Versus a conservative approach, or I like to call a chiropractic-centered treatment approach, which is more moderate and more functional. And the goal here is to try to reduce curves so they never become severe. And the difference is the traditional approach is more reactive more watching and waiting and seeing if the curve becomes severe enough to where surgery is needed, where the functional approach is more being proactive to try to reduce the curve so you never have to deal with the effects of a severe curve and consider surgery to be an option. So when we look at these different scoliosis approaches, each type uses a different type of brace. Traditional treatment options use braces like something called the Milwaukee brace or a Boston brace. And these conservative treatment options, uh, or conservative treatment options opt for more modern corrective braces, something like a Scully brace. Now the, the difference really is that these Milwaukee braces, the end goal is really just trying to slow down and stop progression. And because they're just really trying to slow down and stop progression, they have limited ability in trying to reduce a curve or make a curve smaller where a corrective brace or a scoli brace, the end goal is trying to reduce the curve, make the curve smaller on a structural level. And when we're really trying to reduce the curve at a structural level, the goal is to try to, since we're trying to make the curve smaller, we're trying to impact or influence not only the curve from worsening, but improving what the person already has. So a Milwaukee brace or a traditional Milwaukee brace is something called a traditional CTLSO. C stands for cervical, T stands for thoracic, L stands for lumbar, S stands for sacral, and O stands for orthotic. So it's a cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, orthotic brace used to treat primarily thoracic curves. A Milwaukee brace extends from the cervical spine or neck to the pelvic area. Now, Milwaukee braces are not used very often in the United States anymore, but they are still used in, around the world. Um, and they're trying to actually elongate the spine primarily to decompress it. It's this neck ring and this pelvic girdle that's connected through metal bars at the torso that make this brace very difficult to tolerate. It's designed for full-time wear, but it's very bulky, very uncomfortable, and there's lots of compliant issues. But it's really just elongating. That's all it's really doing. It's not dealing with the three-dimensional component of scoliosis. It's not really derotating the spine in a proper way. It's not dealing with the proper push it. It's really just mostly elongation with some squeezing, but mostly elongation. As a result of this, it really only works in one type of patient, and they only really prescribe these in adolescent cases that are actually gr still actively growing, and normally they're growing rapidly. So once you go through your rapid phase of growth, typically you're past RISR-3, which is a growth scale. Once you're past RISR-3, RISR-4, RISR they don't recommend these types of braces anymore because they're not really designed to reduce your curve. So it only can be used in growth phase to try to slow down progression. And it's normally only recommended in between cases of 25 and 40 degrees because that's the only case that they would say, um, where it's a moderate scoliosis, that would recommend something like this. Once you break 40 degrees and your curve is considered severe, or once you stop growing, or if your curve is less than 25 degrees, meaning it hasn't gotten severe enough for, for this type of brace, they don't recommend it because they have no effect in trying to reduce the curve. They're just trying to slow down the progressing progression. Now, what's the difference between a corrective brace, something like a scoli brace? Well, the difference is a scoli brace or a corrective brace is something that's corrective in nature. They're custom designed one by one to actually fit the patient, so they're definitely more comfortable to wear, and there's much better compliance. 
And the main goal here is scoli braces or corrective braces are designed to push the spine into a corrected position. It doesn't squeeze. Now, why is that important? Squeezing can actually weaken the spine and make muscles and tissues actually weaker. So therefore, they only want to use these types of braces in, in growing phases because they're just trying to slow down progression. Where a corrective brace, we can use in any type, in, in any age. And the reason why, because we're using it as a corrective tool. Think of a corrective brace or a scoli brace as corrective teeth, as corrective braces for your teeth, where a traditional brace, like a Milwaukee brace, like a retainer for your teeth. One's just trying to hold them where they are, while the other one's trying to correct them. Well, since corrective braces are used to correct alignment of teeth, they can use corrective braces in any age. You don't have to be just growing. And you also would have to imagine, imagine if the only goal of corrective braces of your teeth were just to hold your teeth the same, nobody would ever do it. Like the reason why people do braces of their teeth is because they're trying to make their teeth straighter. And that's the exact same thing it is with our corrective scoli braces. The second thing is that, or the other thing is that these scoli braces are designed to correct the three-dimensional nature of scoliosis. So not only are we elongating like the Milwaukee brace, but we're also derotating we're un and we're also unbending. So we're dealing with all three components of the scoliosis to not only manage the scoliosis, specifically reduce the curvature on a structural level. Now, the great thing about reducing the curve on a structural level, there's some added benefits. As your curve gets smaller, the curve becomes easier to manage. As the curve gets smaller, the brace becomes easier and easier to wear because it's applying less pressure to the same person. In addition, we also get tremendous cosmetic improvements to the torso and the shape of the body. So all the asymmetries that we tend to see tend to improve as a result. So when we look at these two types of braces, a Milwaukee brace or a Scully brace, which is a corrective style brace, which one's the best? Well, really the best brace is one that's aligned with your treatment outcomes and expectations. So if your goal is really just to try to stop the curve from progressing, well then maybe a Milwaukee brace or a Boston brace is what you would expect. But if your goal is correction, to try to reduce the size of curve, to improve the natural function of the body and improve the shape of your torso, then the cor a corrective brace or a scoli brace would be the best option for you. Really, you need to ex you have to understand which type of brace is going to produce the outcome. Now, the last thing I'll say about bracing is this: is that braces have all these names. You know, there's Scully braces, there's Boston braces, there, there's Milwaukee braces, there's Providence braces, there's Charleston braces. There's all these different names, and all these different names of braces means that it kind of fits a certain category. But really, the person who's designing your brace, fitting your brace, making sure it's aligning with your therapy and rehab, is really the the, the person that's responsible for the outcome of your brace, because that's the person that's designing the brace to do what it's supposed to do. So you have to seek somebody out who has experience in delivering the type of brace or approach that you want. Meaning, if you deal with a patient, or if you deal with an orthotist or somebody who does braces, that they only do really Boston braces that are trying to slow down progression or Milwaukee braces that are trying to slow down progression, and you're expecting this person now to build a corrective brace that they've never done before, the likelihood of them having a successful outcome and designing a brace that they've never designed before is very, very small. Where if you're dealing with a doctor, that's all they do is do corrective style type of care. And that's the only type of brace they actually deliver and fit. And the goal is to monitor this brace to make sure it's very effective over time. Then you're more likely to get a, a good outcome. In addition, corrective braces are more often modified just like braces on your teeth. When you go and get braces on your teeth, normally you don't get one set of braces and you come back two years later and your teeth are straight. You're going in every 90 days and they're making modifications and adjustments to the braces to make your teeth as straight as possible in incremental patterns. Well, the same thing happens with corrective braces. Very rarely I'm here at Scholarship Reduction Center and me, I'm giving somebody a brace and not making any changes to it. Normally within 90 days, 120 days, we're adding corrective forces into the brace to try to push the spine even into a more straighter position or a more straight position, trying to get more correction above what we already have gotten, just like you would do with braces on your teeth. So not only is the initial fit important, the initial design important, but also the proper management over time is important because a brace is only as corrective as it's applying pressure. And as the spine improves, you normally have to apply more.
pressure. And this is also a very big fault of most Milwaukee-style braces or Boston braces because they normally just give them one brace and the only time they ever change it if, if they outgrow the brace. So since we're acting in a corrective manner, we have to be much more proactive with these types of treatment. So at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we're very proactive in this conservative treatment manner. This is all we do is corrective style care and a corrective style brace to provide the very best results for our patients. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.